Hi folks, thanks for dropping by. My name is David Lentz. I'm here to tell you about my book. It's called Rouse Solution. There it is. Rouse Solution. Uh, I wrote it in 2014 and pretty much went to market in 2016, in the summer of 2016. Since then we've had the presidential election. As a matter of fact, uh, President Trump was inaugurated yesterday, so this is being videotaped in January of 2017. Um, I wrote Rouse's solution, uh, not even being aware when I wrote it of Mr. Trump's political uh, ambitions, uh, but I find that kind of amusing. And if you read the book, you'll you'll sort of see why I find that kind of amusing. Uh, perhaps I was a little more prescient than I, I thought I might be, but, but the reason I wrote the book was uh, several years ago I wrote a book called Law Lawyers in Your Case. I'm a lawyer by training and, uh, and profession. And uh, I, uh, I also uh, have a, uh, a, a graduate degree in business and I've taught at, at the university level uh, in some, at some business schools. Uh, so in any event, but when I was writing the book on lawyers, uh, there was a chapter in it, there was going to be more than a chapter on settlement of legal cases, and the discussion was going to center around uh, how you value, come up with a settlement value for a case. Well, I started thinking about risk, and I decided that that was a subject that needed to be separately treated. I was never really satisfied with what I was coming up with, but I did come up with a hypothetical in my own mind that became the basis for this TV game show, which is designed to basically totally uh, even the playing field between the rich and the poor, give everybody an equal shot at winning, uh, and uh, see how risk affected how the participants played the game. And uh, I, in the process of that, uh, I think that basically the book points out some of the reasons why we have this widening wealth gap and why capitalism, despite the fact that it is probably the best economic system on the face of the planet, like all things that are man-made, it has its flaws. And uh, it has the structural flaw that the, the book, I think, if the, if the point made in the book is taken to its logical conclusion, would demonstrate that ultimately <coughs> capitalism will ultimately lead to oligarchy, government by just a few, powerful rich people, or even monopoly, you know, a super wealthy person. And if you look at what's going on with uh, some of the, like, the internet and is being dominated by fewer and fewer parties, if you look at even the retail business, that's being dominated by fewer and fewer parties. We have this confluence of wealth and power and fewer and fewer people. And if you look at what's going on, we have a dictator in the Soviet Union, we have, you look at Erdogan in Turkey, and you look at the situation in China, their current president is also, uh, seems to be centering a lot of power around himself. That if you look at those situations, and if you look at President Trump's uh, cabinet picks, that you'll see that in, in, in more and more, we've got richer and richer people running everything. They're not only just running businesses, now they're running government and everything else. So, if you take the, the oligarchy thing and you take into account drones, and the book talks a little bit about drones, well it doesn't talk about it, it's woven into the plot. Uh, we see that it takes less and less for fewer and fewer people to control everything. And so that situation has got to be rectified, and that's one reason why Rao, who you know is sort of a uh, more of an empathetic kind of politician, he cares about the uh, the lower 
classes in his country, and he requires that he doesn't say that the, the employees have to be paid exactly what upper management is being made, but he, he imposes this law that says, hey, you got to pay them at least some of what you get, uh, some uh, percentage of what you as upper management get. Now, it's not a minimum wage law because the, the, the employee's compensation is tied to what upper management makes. So upper management can pay themselves anything they want, but if they do, they've got to sort of also boost the earnings of the lower paid employees. Uh, anyway, the book is interesting because there's an assassination plot. This, this rogue CIA agent tries to come back to New York and he runs to see this love interest that he has with this girl who happens to be a game, the, one of the first game show participants who just so happens to fall in love with the, the, the main protagonist of the book. Uh, who is this television show's producer, and he's got a college-age kid who is involved in a fraternity that they seem to be out carousing about and up to no good. It's worrying him to death. He's having marital problems. He falls in love with one of these contestants who also, uh, and, and this contestant just oddly enough happens to be from the country uh, that Rao is trying to implement these new wage laws in. Um, but the book deals with all these issues and it talks about uh, how, how Rao's wage law would, be, uh, would impact international trade and moving jobs overseas and whether that would uh, you know, help to solve that problem. Uh, there's an in-depth discussion about it, about it interwoven into the book, um, and uh, I won't bore you with the details of how I do that, but I tried to make it, you know, that's the reason I wrote the book, I, it to be entertaining, but yet uh, sort of enlightening in dealing with all these hot button issues that are currently extremely relevant. Uh, but uh, I think that the book in this game show, oddly enough, which is a fair game show, which uh, has an effect on uh, Paul Earl, he's the producer of this game show, his entire political view of the world and what makes it tick and what uh, may be the proper course of action uh, because it has a profound effect on him, this, this very simple game show. Uh, and the, uh, the outcomes of the game show, I tried very, very hard to make very realistic and very, very fair. And uh, I think that it demonstrates that, uh, you know, that may be the uh, inevitable outcome of capitalism in all circumstances. Uh, this isn't a book about communism. It's, it's a book that basically makes these points, and uh, I hope that uh, I, I think that it's an I put it in an entertaining context, and I hope that uh, that uh, you'll uh, pick up a copy of uh, Rao's Solution which, when you're at your favorite bookstore, and uh, I'll see you at uh, reasonandbalance.com next time. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.